Hey, what's up? My name is Mitch and I'm the founder of Velociraptor AI. And since everyone and their dog wants a chatbot these days, I'm gonna show you how you can go about building an architecture of your own, very own chatbot that's trained on your company's data, um, internal documents, PDFs, that sort of thing, uh, and can answer amazing detailed questions about all these uh, you know, first party files and uh, how you can go about building this architecture for yourself. And so to start off with, uh, let's just do a quick demo. So here we got the company chat bot. This is the homepage where you can ask various questions to the bot. And in the background, we've got a document manager, which is all the documents the chat bot has been trained on. So I've just uploaded a few example documents at the moment, the Falcon user's guide from SpaceX's website, um, uh, take a PDF of my website, and then the latest Berkshire Hathaway report. Um, so let's go ahead and go and ask the chat bot. Uh, what does Berkshire Hathaway have to say about Coke lately, because Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett always has interesting things to say about uh, Coca-Cola. So in the background, it's gone and it's searched through that um, Berkshire Hathaway report that uh, the chatbot has been trained on, and it's gone and answered questions, uh, answered our question about what Berkshire Hathaway has to say about Coke with some very interesting stats. The chatbot also has a source, um, and in the background, you can see it's coming straight from that report. Okay, so we also had the Falcon 9 user guide there. So let's ask a uh, completely different changing tack here. What is the thrust of the Merlin engine? Since the user guide for a rocket definitely has the, the thrust information. And so there we go. Each of the 27 first stage engines in the Falcon Heavy produces 190,000 pounds of thrust at sea level. And lastly, since we also trained it on that little thing on my website, let's ask what is the mandate of Athena about? Because if you go and you look in that document there, there's a whole big um, explanation of the mandate of Athena, which is my novel about AI that I recently wrote and that the chatbot has been trained on. And so the advantage of all of this is obviously that a lot of this information isn't available on the wider internet. Uh, and there's lots of um, important company information or company reports, um, fact sheets, even um, internal policies and documentation, regulatory compliance documents uh, that isn't out on the internet that a chatbot doesn't know about, That is, but that is very interesting and very useful to use um, in a chatbot format. And so in this document manager here, we can go ahead, we can delete um, documents and then we can go back to the chatbot and it won't be able to answer questions about that. We can go and add more files. There's an additional client mode as well, which is trained on a different amount of documents. Here I've trained it on the um, uh, what was it, the promotional PDF of the OpenAI GPT-4.0 release, 4 release. And so you can basically have as many chatbots as you want. I've just got two working here. And um, so you can imagine having personal detailed information about the company in the normal mode and then a client mode where you only expose certain amounts of that information to a client. Say so you just want the client to answer questions about your internal products and that as not as opposed to your internal policies and ways of doing business. Um, yeah, so we've got searching, got filtering here, all that good stuff. We've got um, a chatbot linked in, in the background to various LLM providers. And yeah, that's basically the demo of the bot that I have built. But now let's actually go into the architecture of how you can build this yourself um, in your internal company in, with your internal team and that, um, and at least the way that I've architected it out and I think is a decent way of managing um, what's fast becoming a very common use case. So let's go ahead and get this started here. So yeah, basically I'm gonna walk through the architecture, the vector database that's used in the background to basically train the chatbot to take like PDFs, documents, images, whatever kind of proprietary information you've got and turn that into useful information that a um, AI uh, provider like a OpenAI or Anthropic can understand and answer for. And we're gonna talk about like the document management, how you can store the files and how you have to store it in a special format for the AI to understand it, as well as the API calls to the LLMs in the front end that you need to get going. So to start off with, like the way I've approached this very, <laughs> very common problem is to do a client server architecture. And so the client, which is using Vue.js in the front because it's a JavaScript framework, it's what I've got experience with, and it's what allows you to create really nice front end websites like this, what we're used to. Um, in the background, I'm using Flask, so using Python, and because Python is obviously the language of choice for machine learning applications. When you're just making calls actually to APIs, you could probably get away with using another framework. 
But um, additionally, some of the um, vector database stuff is only available for Python. And so um, it's what I'm familiar with with machine learning work, and it's what I've architected it with. And so both of those, uh, client and server, can run on same same machine, separate machine. I've got them running on a Linux virtual a private server, virtual machine, basically, with Nginx as the proxy server. And then the front end and back end can talk to each other. And obviously, you want your back end and front end separated, mainly because you're calling APIs. You've got API keys. It's a bit of a security risk to have your um, function calls right in the front end. You could if you wanted to, but for the sake of completeness and, you know, obviously this is a tiny small demo example, but when you're scaling it up to lots of users and um, lots of different systems, potentially scaling it out, not just to a, like a view front end, but a WhatsApp or Telegram, whatever, you know, exposing it to different front ends, uh, you want a client server architecture. So yeah, that's how I architected it and it's been running pretty smoothly so far. So going on to talk about the vector database, so basically how the actual chatbot learns or it understands your data that you've uploaded to it is it takes a rep vector representation of a PDF or of an image or whatever documents or um, information that you've uploaded it, uh, uploaded to the, the bot and it vectorizes it. It turns it into a long stream of numbers um, that can be understood and interpreted as information by an LLM, by a, an AI like OpenAI's GPT that understands vectors and that as information. And so we need to take a vector database to take all our PDF documents and convert those into vectors and store those vectors somewhere so that we don't have to continuously convert information back and forth between text and vectors. And so um, there's lots of different cool online um, vector databases like Pinecone, but for once again, for the sake of simplicity, for the sake of storing it here in our folder alongside our other stuff, alongside our documents and alongside our, our program code, I'm using um, Meta, or I guess Facebook's uh, FAS library. Um, it's a vector database that stores it in a single file, well, two files. You can see the index.fas and index.pickle. Really nice. It's like a, it's like a SQL um, Lite database that's just stored on your file server. Um, sorry, your server, wherever you're running stuff. And uh, it basically just uses the Euclidean distance um, to find um, the information that is similar to certain vectors. So when you ask the, the chatbot a question about um, rockets, it goes, it takes the word rocket, it goes and searches through what information it understands about rockets from the documents that you've uploaded, finds the Euclidean distance, you know, does some magic in the background, finds the most relevant documents, and then that is what's sent off ultimately to the LLM, um, whether you're doing it privately, whether you're doing it publicly, um, to answer your, your user's initial question. And so, yeah, the FAST uh, documentation is pretty good. There's nice Python integrations. And so that's what I've used here in this project. Moving on to the document management. Um, so we obviously need some way to manage, um, you know, an unwieldy amount of documents that's uploaded to a chatbot, an uh, internal company chatbot that you want to do cool things with. And so, yeah, you also have to obviously keep in mind that what you might have in file storage, just saving the regular PDFs is, might be different to what you've got saved in your vector database. And so um, just writing code in that for managing those discrepancies, as well as um, the client versus non-client vector databases and just file storage, because obviously you don't want your clients to be seeing the privileged internal information that you yourself in the business want to be see want to be seeing, and then just handling inside of like a document manager, whether you're deleting from a client database, from your own database, um, and just sync, doing some syncing between those. Then of course, you know, the usual uh, front end user interface stuff, like popping up toast notifications for whether the user has successfully deleted or uh, updated or uploaded an, uh, a PDF or an image or whatever. And then all the good searching and filtering that you need when you've got a lot of documents, when you've got a lot of files, because right now you can see there's just three files there, but I've been implemented it actually where there's like over 40 and it fast becomes unmanageable. So you've got to have some kind of searching and filtering. And so, yeah, that's the solution that I've got for, the, for document managing so far, and it's working pretty well. Moving on, obviously, to the actual brains of your AI application. This is obviously just a thin GPT wrapper, although in this case, we're actually using Anthropic um, to pass the context of the question from the vector database over to the LLM, to the API. Um, I'm using Anthropic because it's a lot cheaper and it's decent at actually answering questions, though still in the background, we've got some um, opportunities to use the GPT um, 4, 4 API because when you've got a lot more complex queries, I still find GPT answers them better than even Anthropic's Claude and Opus models. Um, so yeah, got OpenAI and Anthropic handling code in the background, uh, just handling the return from it and then posting it as a message in the nice message log that you saw there in the demo. 
front end, um, I'm using Vue.js, as I mentioned, as well as the Vuestick framework, just because they've got some really nice components that you can use. I've got a uh, home document manager, navbar components, and then, yeah, that's all spliced together nicely to make the front end that you saw. Not much to say here. I mean, you can use whatever front end service you're using. And of course, with the client server model, you might actually be doing this for a WhatsApp bot, or you, you might be putting it into Slack or something. And so you don't want to be using um, Vue anyway, but it's what I know, it's what I'm familiar with, and it's what um, I recommend like all front end developers start with just because it's so lacky to use. And then when you tie all of that together, you get something like what I just showed you, a nice company chatbot that's got um, intelligent document managing in the background. It can answer questions about various internal company policies, company documents, the sort of stuff that you can't find on the internet, but that takes the power of GPT and OpenAI and then makes it really nice uh, to use. Uh, we've got a client mode, so you can turn it on and off. You can uh, expose different parts of information to your clients, whether it's on the same website or a different website. You know, it doesn't matter. You can just hook that up to your server in the background. Whether you're integrating it with a WhatsApp chatbot, you can make it happen. And yeah, that is my how I actually went about going and building a, a chatbot that can uh, learn from a company's internal information and offer like a really nice chatbot service for both internal employees and external customers. Um, and so I hope it's it helps just talking through the architecture and that how I would go about building it. And if you're looking to build it yourself, obviously, if that's all a bit complicated and you're not that keen to actually go build it yourself, um, send us a message at Velociraptor AI. The website's in the bio in description below. Uh, and we'll build you one uh, and we can show you off all the cool features and that we can add for you. And yeah, we basically got the code up and running for a few clients already, which is really nice and they're loving it. And so, yeah, if you'd be, be keen, hit us up and we'll get you sorted. But thanks so much for watching this uh, short educational video. I hope that you have a good day and I'll talk to you later. Cheers.